The Guardian News. Michael Flynn resigns. Trump's national security adviser quits over Russia links as it happened. 6.20 MGMT 620. Summary. General Michael Flynn has resigned as Donald Trump's national security adviser after weeks of speculation over his links to Russia turned into days of reporting on the contents of his calls with the Russian ambassador and a day of intense pressure over whether the president could continue to back his pick. The resignation came late at night, at around 11 p.m. Washington, D.C., after further news reports revealed that the White House had been warned last month by then-acting Attorney General Sally Yates before she was fired for advising Justice Department lawyers that the travel ban was not lawful that Flynn was vulnerable to blackmail. Transcripts of intercepted calls between Flynn and Russian Ambassador to the U.S., Sergei Kislev, as described by U.S. officials to various news outlets, showed the two had discussed sanctions ahead of Trump's inauguration, when Flynn was part of the transition team but not in post as national security adviser. Sanctions had been imposed by then-President Barack Obama after U.S. agencies concluded Moscow had interfered in the U.S. election campaign. In his resignation letter, Flynn conceded that he had misled the Vice President Mike Pence, who had previously publicly denied that Flynn had discussed sanctions with Kiss Live. Flynn wrote, Unfortunately, because of the fast pace of events, I inadvertently briefed the Vice President-elect and others with incomplete information regarding my phone calls with the Russian ambassador. I have sincerely apologized to the President and the Vice President, and they have accepted my apology. Read the resignation letter in full here. Keith Kellogg has been appointed acting national security adviser. He along with David Petrius, who meets Trump at the White House on Tuesday, and Robert Harward are in the running to succeed Flynn. Read more. Flynn quits after claims he secretly spoke with Russia, then lied about it. Keith Kellogg, who is Trump's acting national security adviser. Richard Wolff. Flynn might be done but Trump's nightmare has just begun. Updated at 7.58 MGMT. 6.00 MGMT 6 o'clock. Kellogg aside, who else is in the running to succeed Flynn as National Security Advisor? Courtesy of AP, here's more on the men confirmed by White House sources as possible appointments. David Petrius. The most audacious choice would likely be former CIA Director David Petrius. Petrius, a retired four-star general, was bounced from his position atop the intelligence agency in 2012 after he it was revealed that he passed on classified information to his biographer, who had also become his mistress. But Trump during the campaign spoke sympathetically about Petrius despite his frequent criticisms of his Democratic opponent Hillary Clinton for mishandling classified materials. Petrius was briefly under consideration to become Secretary of State before Trump picked Exxon CEO Rex Tillerson. David Petrius David Petrius Photograph, Jason Reed slash Reuters Robert Harward Robert Harward, a Navy SEAL and retired Vice Admiral, served as Deputy Commander of the United States Central Command when it was under the command of General James Mattis, who is now Secretary of Defense. He served on the National Security Council for President George W. Bush and commissioned the National Counter-Terrorism Center. Upon retirement in 2013 after a nearly 40-year career in the Navy, Harward took a post as a chief executive officer for defense and aerospace giant Lockheed Martin in the United Arab Emirates. Trump has recently been in very public negotiations with Lockheed over the cost of its F-35 fighter jet program. 5.53 MGMT 5.53 Who is Keith Kellogg? Alan Uhas Alan Uhas Kellogg, 72 named as Trump's acting national security adviser, was born in Ohio and served 36 years in the military, in the army in Vietnam, as a special forces officer in Cambodia, 
and during the first Iraq war as chief of staff for the 82nd Airborne Division. He rose to command the Airborne Division from 1997 to 1998 and later came to national prominence when he served as chief operating officer for Baghdad's provisional government through 2004 a year of mistakes by the transitional administration that haunted Iraq through the next decade of war. After his retirement Kellogg joined a series of contracting firms including tech giant Oracle and defense contractor Cubic Defense. The retired general has kept a low profile in the White House compared with his predecessor. He was granted a formal role in Trump's transition team and later named Chief of Staff and Executive Secretary of the National Security Council, making him one military counterweight to an unusually prominent civilian on the council, Trump's chief strategist, Steve Bannon. Updated at 6.08 MGMT. 5.47 MGMT 547. Twitter has been full of helpful suggestions that Flynn could now spend more time with his conspiracy theories but Hillary Clinton has now joined their ranks. Flynn notoriously tweeted a link to an entirely fake story that a DC pizzeria called Comet Ping Pong was linked to a child abuse ring involving the Clintons. Hillary Clinton, at Hillary Clinton. Philippe's got his own way of saying things, but he has a point about the real consequences of fake news, https slash slash t dot co slash a zero two cf. February 14, 2017. Philippe Reigns, at Philippe Reigns. Dear Mike Flynn and Mike Flynn Jr. What goes around comets around? 5.40 MGMT 540. Summary Julian Borger Julian Borger The U.S. National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn, resigned late on Monday night amid a flow of intelligence leaks that he had secretly discussed sanctions with the Russian ambassador to Washington and then tried to cover up the conversations. The resignation, with the Trump era less than four weeks old, is the latest and most dramatic convulsion in the most chaotic start to an administration in modern U.S. history. It was far from clear whether Flynn's departure would steady an inexperienced and feuding White House, or resolve the lingering suspicions about the Trump team's pre-election contacts with the Kremlin. The White House issued a statement just after 11 p.m. in Washington announcing the resignation, Shortly after reports broke that the Trump administration had been warned weeks ago that Flynn might be vulnerable to Russian blackmail. The statement also named retired Army General Joseph Keith Kellogg as acting National Security Advisor, pending the appointment of a permanent successor. It was reported that a third general, former CIA Director David Petraeus, was due to meet Trump on Tuesday. In his resignation letter, Flynn claimed he had mistakenly misled Vice President Mike Pence and other Trump officials about the nature of phone calls in December to the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kiselyak. When intelligence leaks about the communications began appearing last month, Pence and other White House officials insisted the contact had involved only an exchange of Christmas greetings and arrangements for a future phone conversation between Trump and Vladimir Putin. However, Subsequent leaks suggested that they had been more substantial, and concerned sanctions the Obama administration was about to impose on Moscow for interference in the presidential elections. Intelligence officials claimed that Flynn had given the impression the sanctions might be lifted once the Trump administration came to office on January 20. 5.30 MGMT 5.30 Republican Devin Nunes, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, is the first supportive voice I've so far seen for Flynn since news broke of his resignation. Michael Flynn served in the U.S. military for more than three decades. Washington, D.C. can be a rough town for honorable people, and Flynn who has always been a soldier, not a politician deserves America's gratitude and respect for dedicating so much of his life to strengthening our national security. I thank him for his many years of distinguished service. 5.20 MGMT 520. Flynn's resignation letter doesn't go into detail of his communications with the Russian ambassador to the U.S., Sergei Kislev. 
Transcripts of intercepted calls, though, as described by U.S. officials to various news outlets, showed that the two had discussed sanctions although not necessarily going so far as Flynn promising that Trump would lift them. The conversations have been described as potentially illegal because of the 1799 Logan Act, which bans private citizens from negotiating with countries with which the U.S. is in dispute. The calls were made before Trump's inauguration, when Flynn was part of the transition team but not in post as national security advisor. But many have said the wider issue is the extent of any collusion between Russia and the Trump administration. That issue remains unresolved by Flynn's ousting. 5.13 MGMT 513 As with the travel ban, Sally Yates the former acting attorney general, fired from that role by Trump after she advised Justice Department lawyers that the executive order was not lawful finds herself at the center of this story. As the Washington Post reports, Yates reported to the White House in January her concerns over Flynn's potential susceptibility to blackmail due to his communications with Russia. The acting attorney general informed the Trump White House late last month that she believed Michael Flynn had misled senior administration officials about the nature of his communications with the Russian ambassador to the United States, and warned that the national security adviser was potentially vulnerable to Russian blackmail, current and former U.S. officials said. The message, delivered by Sally Q. Yates and a senior career national security official to the White House counsel, was prompted by concerns that Flynn, when asked about his calls and texts with the Russian diplomat, had told Vice President-elect Mike Pence and others that he had not discussed the Obama administration sanctions on Russia for its interference in the 2016 election, the officials said. It is unclear what the White House counsel, Donald McGahn, did with the information. Sally Yates Sally Yates Photograph, Saul Loeb slash AFP slash Getty Images 5.08 MGMT 508 Just hours before his resignation, Flynn was in the front row as Trump held a joint press conference with Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The U.S. President took two questions from reporters neither of which were about his then national security adviser and ignored shouted queries from other journalists as he left the room. Donald Trump's strange handshake style and how Justin Trudeau beat it. 4.59 MGMT 459 As so often, it's the attempted cover-up that can sting you. Here's Michael McFaul, a former U.S. ambassador to Russia under Obama, on why the misleading of Pence by Flynn was what did for the latter. Michael McFaul, at McFaul it's not illegal and shouldn't be suspicious for Americans to talk to foreign diplomats. It's what Flynn said to VP that caused him trouble. February 14, 2017 4.54 MGMT 454 Julian Borger Julian Borger The future of Michael Flynn had looked uncertain since Friday after reports that he had discussed U.S. sanctions with the Russian ambassador to Washington before taking office, contrary to his earlier adamant denials. The reports, based on leaks from current and former officials, also point to contacts between the former general and Russian officials going back to before the November 8 election and election that the U.S. intelligence agencies believe Russia tried to influence in Donald Trump's favor. Both the Washington Post and the New York Times reported that Flynn talked to the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kiselyak, about forthcoming sanctions from the Obama administration in response to Russian electoral meddling. The allegations led to calls from Democrats for Flynn to be dismissed while some prominent Republicans were tepid in their support. When asked by reporters aboard Air Force One about the report, Trump replied, I don't know about that. I haven't seen it. What report is that? I haven't seen that. I'll look into that. Flynn and the U.S. Vice President, Mike Pence, 
had previously issued flat denials that Flynn and Kieselyak had spoken about anything of substance and the White House had insisted that the conversations involved only the exchange of Christmas greetings and preparations for a future Trump phone call with Vladimir Putin. On Friday, Flynn's staff at the National Security Council said he could no longer be sure whether sanctions had been discussed. 4.50 MGMT 450 Questions about who knew what within the Trump administration up to and including the president himself will not disappear with Flynn's retreating figure. Eyebrows had already been raised by this tweet from Trump, after Russian President Vladimir Putin announced he would not retaliate after the expulsion of 35 Russian diplomats by the Obama administration, following allegations of Moscow meddling in the U.S. election. Donald J. Trump, at Real Donald Trump Great move on delay, by V. Putin, I always knew he was very smart. December 30, 2016 Now, given Flynn's conversations with the Russian ambassador and his confessed misleading of the then VP-elect Trump and his team will be pressed on what they knew of his communications. Whether they'll answer is, of course, a different matter. Updated at 4.51 MGMT 4.46 MGMT 446 Democrat Adam Schiff, ranking member of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, said the resignation was inevitable and Flynn had been a poor choice for the role. General Flynn's decision to step down as National Security Advisor was all but ordained the day he misled the country about his secret talks with the Russian ambassador. In fact, Flynn was always a poor choice for national security advisor, a role in which you need to be a consensus builder, and possess sobriety and steady judgment. It is certainly no role for someone who plays fast and loose with the truth. But Flynn's departure does not end questions over his contacts with the Russians, which have been alleged to have begun well before December 29. These alleged contacts and any others the Trump campaign may have had with the Kremlin are the subject of the House Intelligence Committee's ongoing investigation. Moreover, the Trump administration has yet to be forthcoming about who was aware of Flynn's conversations with the ambassador and whether he was acting on the instructions of the president or any other officials, or with their knowledge. 4.42 MGMT 442 Life moves pretty fast. Here's Kellyanne Conway, a key counselor to Trump, declaring just a few hours ago that Flynn had the full confidence of the president. Kyle Griffin, at Kyle Griffin 1. Wow here's the video of Conway saying Flynn has full confidence of Trump. PIC.twitter.com slash goo4nsxgmkr February 13, 2017 4.39 MGMT 439 The late-night nature of the resignation suggests deliberations over Flynn's departure were pummeled along by Monday's steady stream of revelations, from the Washington Post, Associated Press, and New York Times. As AP reports, Flynn was spotted near the Oval Office just after 10 p.m. Monday. Amid the uncertainty over Flynn's future, Several of the president's top advisors, including Chief of Staff Reince Priebus and Counsel Don McGahn, ducked in and out of late-night meetings in the West Wing.